Welcome back to Campus Countdown. I'm your host, Emily Sturge, and today we'll be discussing a Christian student who was elected to student government after being denied for quoting the Bible, green energy policies that have led to a power outage in California, resulting in this California college to cancel its classes, and Florida student government introduced an abortion reimbursement bill that would use university funds to reimburse students for abortion-related expenses, such as out-of-state travel. We will be covering these three stories and more on today's episode of Campus Countdown. In our third story this week, a student government senator at the University of Florida introduced a bill that would fund students' abortion procedures and reimburse for abortion-related expenses such as out-of-state travel. The bill would require the university to dedicate $1.5 million. The student government Supreme Court will be viewing a case this semester that could keep this bill alive. As a student at the University of Florida, I'm furious by this. I'm furious that it's being proposed for my tuition dollars to cover the costs of abortions, and I'm not alone in this sentiment. University of Florida Young Americans for Freedom board member Jackson Rao said to Campus Reform, This is a horrific bill through and through, planning to use our tuition money to sanction infanticide. This satanic and morally bankrupt bill must be blocked at all costs. And in my opinion, we should get our governor, Ron DeSantis, involved to ensure life wins. I completely agree with you, Jackson. In our second story this week, green energy policies lead to a power outage, resulting in a California college to cancel its classes. Here with all the details on that story is campus reform correspondent Jack Anderson. In a September 6th tweet, Diablo Valley College announced that all in-person classes were canceled for the day after the San Francisco Bay Area experienced power outages due to a recent heat wave. California has been experiencing a heat wave with record temperatures, leading Governor Gavin Newsom to declare a state of emergency on August 31st. The announcement forecasted an energy deficiency. The governor's declaration came mere days after he announced the state plans to achieve 100% zero emission vehicle sales by 2035. Due to the heat wave, the California grid operator asked electric vehicle owners to limit charging their vehicles to save the power grid from shutting down. To hear Democrat lawmakers tell Californians to limit their electrical usage while simultaneously making plans to mandate electric cars by 2035 completely baffles me. In our top story this week, a Christian student was elected to student government after being denied for quoting the Bible. Over the summer, student Maya Little was denied a position on the University of Houston Student Government Association after she quoted the Bible in her opening speech. She was recently given a second chance, this time coming out victorious. In late August, Little became the first black woman to serve on the University of Houston Student Government Association Supreme Court. Campus Reform reported in July on Little's struggle to obtain enough votes to serve as an associate justice. SGA members accused Little of having latent bias because she began her speech with a Bible verse. Little responded, saying, I'm not only unbiased, but I'm compassionate, kind, and blessed beyond measures to serve all students here on the University of Houston campus. Congratulations, Maya. We applaud you for standing up for your values and inspiring other students to do the same. Now it's time for our woke tweet of the week. A Carnegie Mellon University professor wrote on Twitter, I heard the chief monarch of a thieving, raping, genocidal empire is finally dying. May her pain be excruciating. The tweet was deleted by Twitter for violating community guidelines. This prompted the professor to follow up her original tweet saying, If anyone expects me to express anything but disdain towards Queen Elizabeth II, They should keep wishing on a star. Carnegie Mellon University tweeted in response, We do not condone the offensive and objectionable messages posted by Uju Anya today on her personal social media account. Free expression is core to the mission of higher education. However, the views she shared absolutely do not represent the values of our institution. That wraps up this week's edition of Campus Countdown. To read about these stories and more, visit campusreform.org. Remember to like and subscribe here on YouTube and follow us over on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Campus Reform. 
I'm Emily Sturge. Thanks for watching Campus Countdown.